All right, we're back. We have more Disco Elysium. Let's go talk to the uh, Speed Freaks. And then maybe go finish this game? I truly... Well, if we check the map, there is an island. So there's quite possibly one more location that we haven't been to yet. But I get the feeling once we get there, there's no turning back. And it's more of a... A... Finale kind of situation more than anything else. I could be very wrong, but I'm... I'm under the impression that we're, like, right at the end. I tried looking up a walkthrough at some point to see, like, yeah, how much do I have left? Because this is one of those games that, like, I absolutely adore. It's such a solidly made game. And it is so much going for it. Primer for small kids. Hmm. It's, it's such a solidly main game. It's got so much going for it. And, like, despite the fact that it did comparatively pretty badly for me on YouTube... It is still one of my favorite games of this year. And, I don't know, sometimes it is nice to take everybody's advice and just play what you want. Oh, that reminds me. Is that something on the ground? No. Now that I have infinite money, put 10 cents in and dial a random number. Again? Seriously? Someone with a masculine voice picks up. Hello, Gerard speaking. Hello, Gerard. Technically speaking, your electricity. Is electricity here? I need to speak with electricity, please. No, but I get a feeling I'll kick your ass is going to make an appearance here if you ever call this number again. Have a good one, asshole. Phone hanging up. Ten cents, dial a random number. That is very loud whenever it happens. Stop calling me, man, someone picks up. The voice on the other end is slightly hysterical. I'll get you your money, all right? Just need till tonight. Let me work. You seem to be in some sort of trouble. Maybe I can help you. I'm a police officer. Phone gets hung up as fast as lightning. All you hear is a little shuffle of nylon as the hand moves on the other end. Huh. Single? Huh. Let's you know the lieutenant is ready to move on now. No. I'm tired. A man answers fast this time. His voice is hoarse from cigarettes. You're typing in the background. Sounds like he hasn't talked to anyone in a while. What are you tired of? Writing. I hate writing so much, but I have to get back to it. The man disappears with a sigh. You don't hear the customary disconnect tone. Just silence in the handset. The machine's still waiting for you to dial a number. Seems like it did not have time to swallow the coin. This sometimes happens. Lucky lucky you. The call went too fast for the payphone to register. You can still make a new one without paying. Dial a random number with your eyes closed. You close your eyes and put your index finger on the rotary dial. And pull down on the number. Then move up one and repeat the motion twice. Strange. This is not how you started before. Keep dialing. 414447. The rotary dial feels cold in the sea air. Keep dialing. 1117361. Your fingers keep moving like a spider. Every time you ring, the ring rotates back with a little ring of metal, like a bell tolling. There's more? Yes. 451, 67, 451. You're going deeper now into some unknown place, far away from this island of matter. The stellar communication networks. Finish it. 451. You've dialed God knows how many numbers. The headset has been waiting silently to relay a sing signal. Surely nothing can come of this, you think. But it does. A connection. An ultra-long distance call. Your ear fills with crackle. A wash of strange ocean full of white noise. A little bird starts ringing in there. Not like the local calling tone before. No. A small ring in a cage of distortion. Far away. A distant network of phones. Calling... Calling in the night. The saddest sound of the world. Calling still. The handset starts slipping from your sweaty palm. Your breathing is heavy. Let it call more. Calling. 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 Calling still. Then the ocean breaks. Out of the depths, a woman's voice emerges. Small. The dearest thing you've ever heard. It sounds sleepy. Hello. 
She hums, her voice warm from sleep. Who is this? Who is this? Dora. Who is this? The connection is bad. Dora, the name feels like a gift. A gift that was meant for you. To make it possible to live. And fight. In the distorted distance, you hear someone turning next to her. Bed springs rattle. Don't react. Whatever you do, don't react to that last thing. Don't react. It doesn't matter if you react or not. You still think you hear a man's voice in the background. It's covered in pain and white noise. I can't tell you who I am. I have a secret plan to win mankind's 3,000 years of peace on this planet. I have to be ominously vague. You're not ominous, Harry. You're drunk. You only have two. Maybe three things left to say before the change runs out. I'm not drunk or high. I'm just hurt. Why does it hurt to talk to you? Oh, God. Say nothing. Do you know what time it is? It's so late here. Sounds like she's looking for a clock on the nightstand. It's four o'clock, Harry. I need to wake up in two hours. Where are you going in two hours? To work. I don't like any of these options. So this is the phone number of his ex-wife. I want to talk about me. Who am I? You sound like you know me. What do you want to talk about that we haven't talked about already? This is bad. You feel your right hand on the handset, cramping up with pain. Is there some, someone there with you? Yes. Where are you? You sound like you're in another world. I'm in Marova, sleeping. I don't like any of these options. Your hand isn't moving. The heads, headset hisses in your ear with evil sadness. Ugh. We're going with six. My heart hurts. I'm gonna have a heart attack. Oh no. Please stop. Please, let's just hang up. I thought I was gonna run out of change. I'm the law. I'm a detective. I'm doing a case. There's a hanged man. He's gonna not answer anymore. I'm gonna solve it. Harry. Yeah, I'm not sure if that was worth it or not. But I did it. That was his ex-wife. Dolores Day. Dora. I can, I can see the similarity there. Beams are splintered. The bridge didn't collapse on its own. Artillery broke it. That's been down for a while. I, I'm kind of floored so much of this stuff is still ruined. Uh, but I guess it kind of makes sense. Kind of. One way or another, let's... Let's get in here. Let's talk to these these guys real quick. And then we'll be done. Her book has been left open. So let's start with uh, Egghead, because this is easy. Good morning! Yeah! Hi, he, he waves his hand, hand in the air. The words echo magnificently throughout the nave. Got the tape fixed. Maybe we can use it now. Yeah, remix time! His voice booms through the church as he takes the tape and attaches it to the empty reel slot. Tape goes here into deck B. Clicks the switch. The tape starts spinning. And in his ear, he listens to the audio through his headphones and shouts, Wow! His face lights up with delight. Did you get this from Arno himself? A great excitement is bubbling to the surface within him. This is big. Uh, no, actually, I found it tangled up in a hawthorn tree. Listen, I'm just going to show it to you. Ready? I guess I'm going to have to turn on the music for this. Did that not take? No, that took. Ready.
Whoa, hear that? He wipes his brow. The signs match perfectly. Now, if only we had the beat for the full assault, it'd be un unbelievably hyper. What is this? Estelle looks up from her contact mic. It's good. How'd you guys do that? You're right. Uh, do what? I just found a random tape and brought it to Egghead. He's incredibly, he's just incredibly good at remixing. Yes, but what if Van Eyck based his remix on some forgotten local melody, like a folk song, and you just found the original piece that inspired him to create this jam? That explain why it fits so well. Nah, to me it sounds like classi classic Van Eyck. I don't think he needs any inspiration from folk songs. Maybe he lives in Martinez and just threw away part of his song because he thought it wasn't good enough. I think it's just happenstance. Chaos and action. Contingencies of our limited existence. That Egghead's fantastic talent. He nods to his friend behind the turntables. No, it's right. Egghead's technical talent is the key. No, this is definitely part of the same song. Something cut from it. It fits too well. Something mysterious is going on here. The cell's right. Van Eyck must live around here. It's definitely his creation. Be how it may. It fits! If it fits, it fits! He pumps his fist in the air. Bring up the volume! What about the bass? Do you have any ideas for that? Andre looks back at you. Yeah, I remember. You said it needs more bass. I think you might know the answer. What if we use that crazy sound assault from Suna's experiment, but contained, tamed it, made it pulse? Ooh, ooh! Egghead's puzzled face turns into a wicked grin. But how? What about that compressor Andre was setting up to achieve some sort of parallel processing? Don't be too hard on yourself if you don't figure it out. I think the jam's already pretty ultra. Okay. But it could be hyper. Hyper hardcore. The audio assault can be tamed. Connect the dots. Okay, so I need interfacing. My interfacing is currently plus two. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get much more out of that. Like, we are definitely at peak interfacing here. No, that's reaction speed. Reduce perception. Oh. Oh, these have a plus two to interfacing. So, I guess the real answer is... I guess I'm just going Good for it. Morning. Yeah! So, the audio in assault can be tamed. Connect the dots. Zoop, zoop, zoop. Goes the track in the background, never ending. Can't grasp what's missing, but you can try and make something up anyway. No. Where if one cannot speak, one ought to remain silent. So I need interfacing. And I'm gonna save? I... It's like one of the last things we have to do, so I want to get this working. This might take... Hmm. Godly failure. Here's an idea. Say what you said before, the exact same thing, or wait. Say something that's only marginally different. No. We are we are going to time hacks our way to ultra hardcore because reasons. Also, I really like the song, actually. Like now that we have that second second tape. So I don't know. There we go. Sidechain the beat. Sidechain? What does that even mean? Listen, you can use the compressor to select between which track it's compressing, either the auxiliary signal or the main input from the tape. Make it alternate between the signals. The compressor controls the gain based on the level of the signal on the auxiliary sidechain input. It'll allow maintaining a loud sound without peaks that fill up the all the headspace. Okay, uh, you need to start sidechaining it. Explain the concept to him. Sidechaining it, you said. He turns down the music, his hands moving deftly across the mixer, setting up the necessary controls. 
Then he puts on his headphones and his eyes go wide, wider than they've ever gone on drugs. He starts jumping up and down with bliss, in total silence, still listening to his headphones. Hey, Estelle looks up from her microphone. What did you do to Egghead, cop man? Did you break him? I'm not sure. Are you ready, posse? Noid straightens his back, ready for the beat. I was born ready, Egg. Give him the thumbs up. I mean, this isn't that impressive. It's loud as shit, which is a bit of a problem, but yeah, it's pretty good. I'm gonna have to remember to edit this one hard. The audio assault is glorious. The speed freak dances on the stage, intensely waving his hand in the air. This is beauty! This is life! What the world is going on? Estelle looks on, amazed at the display. The way the melody and bass flow together, it's unnatural. We've tamed the sound, made it our own. God damn it, you hear Andre say to himself over the thumping beat. This dance club idea might just work out. DeLorean Church, the place to be! Egg's losing himself in the sound. Pump it up! Pump it! This is it. This is the new era. A new era. The fabric of the world has been irrevocably altered. Who will be the innocence of hardcore anodic dance music? Oh, that was a crazy sound we heard before. Yeah! It was awesome and scary! Very hardcore! His voice booms through the chamber, then gets silent. Too hardcore, in fact. He brushes his hand through the air. I couldn't control it at all. What happened? It sucks up all the air in the mix until it's the only thing left. It starts compressing itself and everything around it. Completely fills up the headspace. Extreme! Inside your chest, the heart beats still with the after effects of the sound. Imagine if you could harness the power, making it pulse. Anything we can do about it. Ooh! His mind is seemingly selecting through options. I don't know. Maybe someone could do something with this. I imagine that this is the sound that fu that future could make. Sounds like a future I could be even more hardcore than I ever imagined. Yeah! Alright. And we're done with that kid. So let's go talk to a cell next. She's whistling a melody, her trusty contact mic attached to the wooden pulpit. At the sound of your footsteps, she stops what she was doing and turns to you. Hey there. I've been recording some new audio from all these beams and rafters. The sounds traveling through the wood are pretty cool. Creaks and stuff. Like you're underwater, you know, but like underwater inside a tree. And no, it's got nothing to do with contact, Mike. Okay, fine. I really wanted to say thanks for getting me and my friends in here. And we even found some new associates, such as they are. How's everyone doing? Good, I think. Noid is getting a read on the place. I think he finds the carpentry very impressive. Andre's been setting up the compressor and dancing. Egghead's keeping the party up. He's got the stage under control. Soon to the programmer, she's doing whatever she does behind that radio computer of yours. She doesn't talk much, and the crab man hasn't shown himself, thank god. Now can you tell me about your associates? Sure, you helped us out, I can repay the favor. What do you want to know? Tell me about Suna. Uh, she's a bit odd, I have to say. It doesn't talk much. I'm not really sure how to vibe with her, you know? It seems like she's not in a very good mood most of the time. But earlier today, she told me about Welkins. Estelle grimaces as if it's the first time hearing the word. And she seemed oddly happy. Like, she had some idea with those little creatures. Some artistic idea. I didn't really listen. I was busy with my mic. What about Tiago? Oh, the crab man. She shudders. Still gives me the creeps, the way he moves, but doesn't actually come down that much. Just climbs around in the rafters. Try and stay away from the crab man. But he talks to the Noid. They seem to have some thing going on. Oh, he talks to the Noid. What for? It's me. Noid says they get along, somehow. They're both crazy enough, I guess. What does he do up there? Who knows? He shrugs. He doesn't really answer our questions, see? Not that it's easy to ask them. What are we supposed to do? Yell up at the tower? And the others? Andre! He's a cool guy. Doesn't really come off as one, but to me... But he is, to me at least. He takes care of shit. Sorry, I mean, he's got a vision of what life should be, you know? He tries to push things until everything falls into place. He's an organizer. But is he organized? Well, nothing. But then again, there's nothing to organize around here either. He wants this church thing to work. 
Must have taken it as a sign when he found it abandoned like that. Said it was an augury. I don't know where he got that from. She smiles. Andre's not super intelligent. Uh, I've never seen him so psyched about anything, though. He's often psyched. Uh, so psyched about anything, though. And he's often psyched. Looks sort of desperate. Like, it's his last chance or something. Or maybe he was just high. I mean, not that he does drugs. Just high, you know? On life? Uh, yes. Anyway. Is Andre your boyfriend? Yes. She nods. Tell me about the others. Noid! He's a Falberger, I guess. Like the rest of us. Okay, maybe not Egg. I, I don't know about him. But Noid and the rest are from Falberg, making the pilgrimage up north to visit the Pelysium. He's real hardcore about his life uh, about the lifestyle. What does he do? What do you mean? Like, do? Like, for a living? Yeah. He's a carpenter, trained and all. He's very good. He doesn't have the mindset to work like that in a shop somewhere. He, uh, what kind of mindset is that? He abides by the hardcore, sir. You'd have to ask him yourself. And you? Sir, she gives you a switchblade smile. I abide by the law. A strange feeling. Every now and then, something feels off about the way she speaks. She doesn't change tone, but you feel as though there's more about her than she lets on. What's this pilgrimage you're talking about? It's just some poor Fauberg kids do every spring to pass the time. We walk the entire length of Boogie Street up to Jamrock, or as much as that's possible. Why wouldn't it be? I don't know, man. Have you been down Boogie Street? It's a little bewildering. Oh, sorry. Have I not told you I'm a raging alcoholic who recently drank himself into an oblivion so deep he can't even remember what sounds sounds like the biggest street in the city? Uh, kind of. I'm going to say yes. Well, I am. Okay. And you should go and take a look, I guess. Boogie Street is cool. It's got a lot of immigrants and all kinds of different people. I might do that if I make it there alive. Yeah, she says, I hope you do. Tell me about the others. What's the deal with Egghead? What do you mean? Where's he from? How long has he been with you guys? Actually, we don't know where he's from, or who he is, really. One time we were out partying somewhere in the in Backwater Falberg. Maybe even Gold City. I, I can't remember. Maybe it was Gold City. The worst of the... Ben Luis. Ben Luis? I don't know. A wretched heap of closed down mines, even west of Jamrock, on the dusty slope of Mont Mar Martin. The remotest possible area of Revishol. No one ever wants to exploit those people anymore. Egg was yelling along to some jams someone was spinning all night long. Just kept yelling until he didn't have a shred of voice left. And when the sun came up over the mines. There were mines. Yeah, it was in Cole City, she nods. Egg came with us. He made this wheezing puffy puppy dog song the sound all day. Uh, all the way back. Couldn't even speak. It was definitely Cole City, because it took us two days to walk back to the Fow. He just wheezed the whole way. We never asked him why he came with us or who he was. I think his name is Germain. People are sweet, she says quietly. You can see it must have been a great night. The memory causes her to go silent for a moment or two. You wish you'd been there. What does he think he's doing with all with, when he yells at all this stuff? Or yells all that stuff? Oh, that! He's the party boy. He told me as much, but what exactly is a party boy? Nodic dance music doesn't really do vocals in the traditional sense. Vocals are thought of as rock. That's to say they're a bit backward. No offense if you like rock music, though. Rock music is cool by me. Pew 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 pew. Sheesh, your credentials as a future resident future man of Revishol are being questioned. Sure, you're hip with the times, Gramps. You don't have to tell me rock is backward. I am the future man. I abandoned rock in the 30s. Stupid rock spit. Uh, okay, she nods. Anyway, I even if you don't have vocals, you still need someone to say something every now and then. To urge things on. Uh, every now and then, right? To urge things on. That's where the party boy comes in. He basically just stands on the stage and dances and yells how awesome everything is. It's very catchy. I understand. People are usually afraid to do things others aren't already doing... Oh, if others aren't already doing them. Dancing makes you dance, like sneezing makes you sneeze, or yawning makes you... He looks around, a little embarrassed of the enthusiasm of his interjection. Anyway. We certainly saw that in practice, didn't we? Yes, I suppose we did. Tore that shit up. Tore it to pieces. <laughs> Tell me more about Egg. 
What do you want to know? She smiles a little. Nope. Actually, do tell me about yourself. Me again? Yeah, I forgot. Tell me about yourself. I told you, I'm a silver bird. It's that phrase again. It reminds you of something. What does it mean? It means I don't answer questions about myself. There's more to you than you let on. What am I not seeing? Alright, she picks up the tape recorder and looks you in the eye. There is. Fair enough. Thank you. Other questions? Catch the silver bird. Reaction speed. Let's see. Unfortunately, I think my reaction speed's kind of bad right now. That's minus reaction speed. I don't think I have a whole lot that gives a bonus to it. I do kind of wish I could sort based on specific stats, because that would probably help a lot. I must look ridiculous. You know, any any time I need to do a skill check, I sit there, I stare at them for a while, and then I just like get down and just change my my gloves, my hat, my pants, my shirt, jacket, you know, everything. Catch the silver bird. It's already flown away. I'll catch it later. Darn tootin' we will. Nope. Alright. We'll catch it later. Alright, and we'll talk to her. One last time. Oh, and then the Noid. Hail Unknown. I guess I might as well Hail Mary it. Yes. What is it? Nope. All you hear is the silence in your head. Some of these I might just never succeed at, but that's okay. He looks around the hall, examining the carpentry. With wonder in his sharp eyes. I don't know if you've noticed this about me. I'm a little suspicious of authority. You, you really came through for the hardcore underground. Yes, you really came through for the hardcore underground. How come? He spreads his arms, looking around the around at the speed freak setting up shop. It would be leaders cutting some futuristic shapes on the floor, sweating profusely. Asil is using her contact mic to listen to a tree underwater. The one with the large head is blasting the dance track on repeat, while the stained glass window behind him rattling from the base. Sir, the tent, t'was a security risk, and in here, sanctuary, t'was only noble of you. These kids got spunk. I admire that. Okay. The lieutenant keeps laconic. What he means is, you can't possibly have handed them this real estate for such a flimsy reason. Then again, whatever keeps your nose out of a bottle and on the job. Noid, what did you think of, uh, what do you think about the church? It's a total miracle of carpentry. Dead bodies carved into total shapes. Now it can be something more. He rubs his hands together. Say that as a carpenter yourself? He shakes his head. I don't say much of anything as a carpenter anymore. They tried to make me into a reckoner and a leveler. leveler. Made me a bit manic, you know? I regret the time I... Regret the time I dedicated to that profession. And that worker collective. They say things more as a member of the hardcore side dance community these days. Understood. Material knowledge is mega, though. He looks around at the hollow hall of the church. Guild shit teaches independence. How old do you think this church is? Over 300 years? That's right. The first settlers built it. Plus six more like it. On the coast here. It was one of the first things they did. Must have been really scared of something. But I understand. Alone in an uninhabited archipelago. Forced to face themselves in nature. Pre industrial quantities of solitude. The sea? Perhaps something more fundamental. He means something paranatural. He must. I want to build a safe place for myself. And my own as well. His voice echoes in the wooden cavern of the church. Something more fundamental. You mean the sound anomaly? Maybe. He looks up at the rafters. Maybe they're unable to face the nature of the world perishing. Uh, let's see. What style is this church built in? Kapu's into building critique. He taps the floorboard. Okay, then. This is folk DeLoreanism. Lawmongerer. 
It's a subset of early DeLorean architecture. I'm not just a cop, I'm an art cop. Hardcore, he nods appreciatively. Okay, so what is DeLorean architecture like? Total. Everything be between an ancient concrete cathedral and a glass cube is DeLoreanism. This is just the homespun version of it. Folksy stuff. Early mass production. They made thousands like this. Does that help you? What would a DeLorean building look like? Like that woman there. He nods towards the stained glass window. Vertical, thin, white. A false image of van... Cl sorry. A false image of grandeur. The source of the system is up there. You're at the bottom. They really dug out that power vertical. Like to show off large and intricate structures, arches, spires, put you down with them. They were really into painting everything white too. Virginal shit, you know? Marriage shit, virtue and tyranny. Hey, marriage is great. You're entitled to your wrong opinion. He inspects the pillar nearby with the sharp gaze. Church isn't painted white as far as I can tell. It stands to re reason it used to be white on the outside. He peeks out the small window in the dark before the sea wind took all the paint off. Year, year after year, flake after flake, white washed clean, then covered in green moss. It was probably white and gold with light red flower motives. Part of you, assumed to be lost to nerve damage, knows this style to be Ubi DeLoreanism. Is there such a thing as Ubi DeLoreanism, or did I just make that up? Good catch, our cop. He crosses his arms. The herdsmen, herdsmen of the Ubi Sunt. The islands came here in the first boats. Their flowery vert. Uh, their flowery version of DeLoreanism could be what we're standing in. The UP are known for their partially partiality to socialism and sheep. They come from an island called Ubi Sunt, the only place in the world that is a question mark in its name. There's something else important that you should be able to remember about Ubi Sunt. It's all coming, but all of that's coming back to mind is the sheep. What do you mean by dead bodies? Dead bodies of perennial plants, he taps on the wood. Sigma functions have left this place. It's a good thing we came along, the spiritual collapse has been total. Spiritual collapse? I saw some piglets suckling their dead mother. You heard that one. Oh, I heard this one, cop man. He continues without waiting for an answer. After a short while, they shuddered and went away. They had sensed that she could no longer see them, and that she wasn't like them anymore. What they loved in their mother wasn't her body, but whatever it was that made her body alive. End of quote. This is a highly high quality carcass. He kicks the floorboard. The power of a nodic beats and hard bass is needed to reanimate it. First, where's that quote from? A Ceres man. Who lived a long time ago, an ancient hardcore brother. What you're saying is re religion stopped being hardcore. Never was. 3,000 year old regime of history, built by hundreds of generations of self appointed intellectuals. Looks around. It's false to the core. The way he says it, the false, in a false core, is invested with 20 kilotons of disgust. You guys said the Ecclesiastes were all about love and hardcore before, remember? I only said unity. One word. Figures the authority always misquote you. Points to his friends. Andre doesn't care about the Ecclesiastes. He just wants the operation to run smoothly. Neghead is a demi beast. You shouldn't listen to what they, what people say. You should listen to what they are. I haven't agreed with you about the Ecclesiastes being okay with this. But were you wrong? The founding party is okay with everything. Look around. He spreads his arms. They do not have enough love for the human crew to oppose anything anymore. We're on our own. That's a lie. Reassert yourself. That wouldn't be cool. I want to be cool. Mewling wimp pathetic. The new proposed dance music will supplant this system. Anodic dance music, he nods. Regular dance music wasn't hard enough. And yes, I do. Do you like the glass work? I don't. He looks over his shoulder. Giving me the evil eye. Yeah, I'm getting some real negative vibrations from her too. No wonder. He cracks his neck. I have to get rid of it. Dismantle it. Can't dance with the giant mass murderer looking down at you. Not a good look for the club. Mellow, man. Mellow, yells his friend. No one's a mass murderer. This is a house of love. Mass murder on the floor. I do feel like there's something terrifying about her. There is. She's a party repellent. Must be taken down before we can begin partying in here.
Take it down. Crash it. Destroy that window. Will do. The speed freak nods and pets the toolbox as if it were a cat. No, no, wait, stop twisting my melon, man. People are gonna love it. It'll be our thing, his friend disagrees. Plus, it keeps the cold out. Would you say she was, you know, human? Ha! <laughs> Young man stretches his ribcage, made out of suspenders. I like this question, cop man. She did not live the life of a human. She lived like someone who's playing a game. The life of an operator. That's not the life humans live. She was adored. Humans aren't. I don't know about you, but they hate me. And they do not think I'm innocent, or some shit like that. Yeah, they hate this too. Oh, they loved her. They put all their love in her and forgot about all the rest of us. The young man lets go of the suspenders and they hit his chest with a slap. I think I'm done talking about her. I don't want to think about her anymore. What a strange choice of words. Caustic, overflowing with negativity. This can't be healthy. What's happening here? Why do you keep coming back to this window? I don't know. Well, you shouldn't. You shouldn't come back to this anymore. Stop talking about it, please. How are you settling in? Hard to say, cop man. Signs here are distinctly wild. It's gonna take a while before everything's properly synced. I, think it, I did get to talk to the crab man, though. You mean Tiago? Anyway, he's been giving me kind of a psychic rundown of the place. Dude's seen some crazy shit, but he's actually a lot like us. What do you mean? The man picks up on stuff, and he knows a lot about the church. I got, to, I got a lot to learn about. Uh, learn from him. Good thing I didn't squash him. What did Tiago tell you about the church? Crab man's been lurking here for a while. He's experienced things, things that can give off bad signs. As far as we can tell, the Ubis built this place about 380 years ago as a sarcophagus. What's it for? Encasement, confinement, of something they're afraid of. Something new and unheard of on the Isola. He looks up into the darkness beyond the beams. I think that's what the crab man's experiencing when he climbs up around upstairs. Like, this is some old world shit the Ubis had heard about. And thought the best way to deal with it was to build a church surrounding it to contain it. To contain what exactly? I don't know. It's not something they, could, they properly understood either. But it does... Uh, what it does, but it's what this Suna person's looking for. I'm trying to measure, he nods towards the woman. It'll be fruitless, though. She won't be able to measure it. People like that always want to measure everything. All those things, they really can't. What makes you think Suna will fail? It seems to be a trend around here, doesn't it? You can't measure shit like this. It's not like with substance. Oh, if it's without substance, I guess there's nothing to worry about. Maybe you can figure things out, cop man. I think we're on a good level here. The signs are syncing up well. What's up with the clothes? He shrugs. They're hardcore. That's it? They're just clothes. I thought there'd be more to it. It's just a style, you know? Normal hard style. Anyone can wear it. Take care, Noid. Hey, the bow, bow collector is done. It's early morning. The world is dark blue. The sparks light her face. A delicate composition of triangles. The street seems to grow longer. Like a dolly zoom. And there's something in the air as you stand there and wave back at the shape growing smaller and smaller. Something that's always been there. A great see-through world. The tenderness you feel. The ghost of Revishold between you. Carrying your signals. The holy messenger. Okay. Well, I think that's officially it for these characters. Let's take a look at tasks. Yeah. It's down to the last handful. And they're pretty much all plot. So we might actually be right at the end here. Cool. Alright. We're back. I don't know if it's the right time to say let's finish this. But if it is, cool. I'm going to turn down the music a bit. I'm going to have it on for this section. <laughs> Shiver is very high. Found the empty trap. I heard Lena's true story. 
reconstructed at execution, made that awful call, confronted the pigs, established the nightclub, discovered the anomaly, death notification, found the jacket, and my shiver stat is higher. Cool. Okay, we got one last thing that I'm going to check right before. But yeah, Ruby's in there, and she probably ate the locust, which is a little horrifying, to be honest, but whatever. I just want to check this trap one more time. A few locusts trudge along the wall of the trap. The rest are piled in a heap in the corner. Dead. No phasmid anywhere. Poor things. This is too perfect of a song. I don't like it. Anyway. One thing I'm going to do before we go anywhere, before we do anything, just in case. Oh. Oh. There's a help menu. Holding the gun feels natural and satisfying. It's like an extension of your arm. The polished wooden handle almost fusing into your palm. I think my hand recognizes it. It reminds you of the day you first held it. With fear and respect. Hoping you don't have to use it. In vain. The sun was out in Jamrock. It was so long ago. This is your gun. It's more of a symbol than anything else. Because there's always, always a rational, sensible, res reasonable solution to every situation. Sheath it and no. You have the moral high ground. Okay, next order of business. So we want hand-eye coordination. If I can buff it up. So I can't use the boots. We can do the pinball maker's coat. I look very strange. I can only imagine I'm going to need this gun. What are my negatives? Rhetoric and visual calculus and composure. Composure could be an issue. I am unsure. So what do we have on? Necktie is good. Glasses are okay. Okay, the orange bum hat. We'll put that on. We never really did find a whole lot of varieties of pants here. So, the only things that I might switch out would be glasses. Visual calculus is one of my highest, so I can probably take the take the ding. Glasses and pants. And just in general, we barely have a whole lot of pants here, which is just kind of sad. Okay, I think we've pretty much hit peak Dubois. Let's do this. I'm gonna keep turn turning down that music. It is not quiet. Listen to the wind. Suddenly there's a sigh. Carried on the molecules around you, moving, flowing from high pressure to low pressure. Like that of a woman emptying her lungs, she wraps the collapsing stone box in front of you with her inner breath flowing through it. Where does it go? In through the collapsed roof, flowing down a concrete staircase to the basement, sweeping away footprints in the dust and the stairs. And then the beach below the boardwalk, its winding tunnels, a whisper away. What's happening? She's down there. I think she's down there, below this building. Okay, why? Ever since I woke up, maybe even before, I've been getting these strange cold spells. Good, good, yes, cold spells. He seems incredulous. So basically, you're hungover. Your hangover is telling you she's down there. Yes, I can literally talk to my hangover. That's how bad it's gotten. Right. How do we get in, though? The doors were on the collapsed side of this building. They're gone, basically. Finally, my time to shine. There's a ladder next to this sign. Point to them. Perhaps we can climb them, enter through the roof. Perhaps you can climb them. We're not climbing anything. I'm 43 years old. I plan to see 70. 
There has to be a way to use brute force. Climbing sounds unsafe. Brute force is safe. Look around and find something to break. If the ladder fails. Rusty ladder leads to the rooftop. Some of the rungs are missing. Yeah, it doesn't look good at all. Assess the situation. The distances between the remaining runs... Probably rungs. are rather wide. You have to use the mounting brackets. However, they seem to be corroded and peeling... And the peeling rust is razor sharp. In addition, the first rung is going to be tough to reach. It's what? Three meters above the ground? You're... And you're 180? 190. I'm a giant. Okay, but still, the roof is collapsing and the wind is pretty brutal up there. Dismounting from the ladder is going to be hard. Perhaps if you were to not climb the ladder. Instead, what if you are able to do something more subtle? What if you are able to reconceptualize climbing the ladder? Astral projection, be open-minded about this. What if I don't climb? What if I just teleport? Lieutenant stares at you, stone-faced. Teleportation is not a thing. Come on, Kim, where's your adventurous spirit? We're de this really has nothing to do with adventure. We're dealing with basic physics here. It won't hurt to try. Oh yes, it, it could hurt a lot. He's restraining himself from using a parental tone with you right now. Teleport to the roof. All you need to do is close your eyes and concentrate. Darkness enfolds you. You feel the distance between the bench and the first rung of the ladder. All you need is do it. Zoot zap! Pow! Crinkle. It's like magic. You feel yourself disappear. Your atoms fading out of existence. Oh my god, I can't believe it. Bam! You find yourself on the roof. Having mastered the art of physical displacement. Don't gloat. Just stand there like a Samaran master. You know, for the record, you didn't teleport there. You just climbed the ladder with your eyes closed. The wind at the top of the building starts howling loudly, blowing away the lieutenant's voice. Faintly you hear... Never mind. Find a way to get me in when you get inside. Don't go adventuring without backup. Especially if we think the suspect may be hiding in there. <laughs> yeah! The central support beam has been destroyed by artillery fire. Yeah, that would have been dicey. Oh, no, no, shit! Let's go back out. There is stuff in here, though. I took my hand, hands off the mouse to, like, you know, just kind of stretch my hands around, and then a thought popped up. Stones fall. That's a long way down. It wasn't much of a thought, but I do try to read them, despite the amount of people that are like, HE DOESN'T READ THE BOTTLES! And it's like, I do. Good lord. Uh, let's see. Grab that. Marnay's 98. Glass is covered with grime and dust. You can barely see out. You should take out your flashlight. Perhaps nearly sealed the basement. One can barely squeeze by. Is that? Okay, so I can actually squeeze past it. This is one hell of a place to hide, though. Damn. Damn. I never did read a whole lot of books in this game, but I didn't really have time. Antiquated office furniture? Last century, maybe. Bought down and forgotten. So long ago. Overturned tables covered in orange mildew, crawling with something. Old file folders in a cart. Documents silvery with mold. I'm just shocked the documents are still functional. Or existence. Series of thick, dusty panes of glass. Oh. This isn't just glass. They're old computation components. These are computer components? Yeah, filament memories from the time when wires were cast in glass. Slides with inlaid nervous system. How'd they do that and why? 
The how is a closely guarded secret, something that was locked in safes in human heads across the river where they were manufactured. As to why, your fingers don't know. The why is easy, because they hadn't come up with modern silicon-based systems yet, for vitreous cast filament memories. Though, these seem incredibly advanced. And honestly, I expected to have more money. Oh, there he is. Two rusty metal plates that slide apart form a crude door. It's been here under the boardwalk for a while. Who's there? What do you mean, who's there? It's me, Kim. Stop playing around and help me get this door open. Push the doors open. The doors seem to be on rails, but they've gotten jammed. You grab a side and put some strength into prying it open. With the help of your partner, the two metal panels slide open with a creak. Oh, open I hope no one dangerous heard that. How do you even get here? How do you climbed up to the roof, you mean? Oh, there's a maintenance entrance under the boardwalk. It's next to the drain pipe. Possibly a storm drain. It's easy to miss it was easy to miss before. He's quite proud of himself. A maintenance maintenance and entrance. So pedestrian. Yes, yes. It's cool to risk your life climbing tricky ladders. Anyway, let's investigate those passages. In the beam of a flashlight, a crevasse in the wall. Revolutionary's hat. Still fabric smell and dust. No one slept here in months, maybe years. Revolutionary propaganda on the bunk bed. Ancient flyers and brochures. These pots and plates are full of dust and, and spider webs. A mustachioed and mutton chopped man. Amateurishly depicted it. Gazes at you with sad eyes. A plaque reads K. Mazov. There's a spider web in the lower corner of the portrait. Brush the dust off the portrait. Years worth of dust is shaken off. The full head of hair, matched by an ample mustache and sideburns. Looks a bit silly. Someone crouches, heels digging into wet sand. And sweep across the sand, grain sticking to the frayed skin of the fingertips. Old man sits on the slab of con concrete and taps his fingers against the glass of a scope. You shudder. Krasmazov, what a troublemaker he was. Yes, it looks like some latter-day radicals were heading out here. They left a long time ago. Long time ago? How long? Half a century? It's probably part of the network of defense posts the communards built against the amphibious landing. Looks around. I think the purpose of this bunker was to produce propaganda. It would have had radio uh, equipment back then. That's all been looted. It's all of these secret weapons caches and secret bunkers. We've found a lot of these lately. I guess what most people think of as history tends to linger in rundown neighborhoods. Martinez being what it is, no one has gone through the trouble of cleaning out the old bunkers. A good hiding place for someone who's up to no good. Could it be connected to the Mazov bust we found in the students' room? Millions of depictions of Mazov have been produced. They're not all connected. Besides, that one looked like some student. The youths always go for this kind of stuff. Could someone have stopped through here recently? He looks at the dust. You mean like Ruby? No. I think we stumbled on a piece of hi history. Prints in the sand. One of the souls appears more worn than the other. There's something in the air. An unnatural buzzing. Tunnel collapsed. You have to find another way around. Getting louder, the buzzing sound. There it is again. Like a swarm of hornets buzzing under your scalp. A strange tingling you can almost smell. Lieutenant, do you feel something? No, what do you mean? A pain. A strange tingling. I don't feel it, but he looks ahead beyond the arc. Uh, arc? Arch? Arch. We should still be careful. There are footprints back there. 
and I'm pretty sure they were fresh. Saw them too. Footprints with the right sole worn smooth. Looks like it's our suspect. If she's in here, we need to plan our next step carefully. What do you mean? He lowers his voice. Once we detain the credible suspect, who knows what the Union and the Wild Pines will do? We'll set in motion events that we have no control over. It will upset the balance of power in Martinez. The deadlock between the company and the Union will destabilize. This part of town is a fine clockwork puzzle. Disturb its peace, and it will start breaking down uncontrollably. Keep calm. Go over the whole situation in detail. We've met the Union leader, but we haven't gotten any info from him. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. I haven't gotten any info from him. Maybe we should talk to him more first. You're right. However corrupt he may be, nothing happens at Martinez without him knowing. May we may have to dirty our hands, but in this case, we, can af we can't afford to be squeaky clean. Found Everard's plan to take out the harbor. Maybe we should tell Joyce about it. Leave that to your judgment. You already know what I think about cross-pollinating information like this. It's dangerous, but maybe it'll yield something useful. We know that Joyce knows about the murder, but I may have other things to discuss with her. Ah. Yes, there won't be time for that once things go down. Matter of fact, I don't think there's time for it now, but if you must. You checked the buoy with Clausia's documents. I want to hear her take when mine was empty before. Okay, why not? Whatever goes down might affect her. The Union's watching her closely now. Not closely enough, you suspect, but still, good idea to visit her once more. How bad do you think things could get? Well, we're not responsible for what we can't predict, are we? I don't think the entire city will be raised to the ground. He smiles in the dark. If you can't predict it, there's nothing you could have done. Let's see. So what do you think's waiting for us there? I think I see a cavern. The lieutenant's whisper echoes down the tunnel. Maybe more cellars. I think we've been careful enough. We still have the element of surprise. Don't be so sure. You haven't exactly been sneaking. Or maybe not. He puts his hand to his holster. Either way, once we go deeper, there will be no turning back. Okay, so let's go talk to Everett, Joyce, and, uh, and Clausio one more time. He does bring up good points. <laughs>